So around this time every year, I get asked from parents and students, what maths should I choose for my HSC, standard or advanced? And to be fair, it causes way more stress than it probably needs to. And I can understand why, because there's just a lot of misinformation and wrong information out there on the internet. So in this video, I'm gonna go through some reasons why you should or shouldn't choose either standard or advanced maths for your HSC. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, who am I? Well, my name's Adrian. I've been a math teacher for almost 10 years now. So I've seen kids come and go through this whole experience of either choosing standard or advanced maths and stressing about it. Now, I'm probably gonna sound like a little bit of an asshole here, but last year, one of my students came first in the state for standard maths. So I know what it takes when it comes to achieving the top marks that you need. Okay, so the first thing to take into consideration, I think when you're evaluating which course to choose is first of all, what is your goal? Okay, I really think this is the most important thing you need to ask yourself because this is the question that needs to dictate what decision you make in terms of which course you choose. Now, let me just make it super simple for you. If your goal is to maximize your ATAR and get the best bang for buck in terms of your study time and getting the best possible results, you could probably stop this video right now and just go for standard maths. Okay, now the reason I'm saying this is because standard maths is just a much easier course in terms of its complexity and course content compared to advanced maths. Now by extension, because the concepts are easier, it generally takes less time to master the skills and be competent at actually answering the questions and getting those really band five, band six questions. Now I hear some of you thinking already, oh, what about scaling? What about scaling up, scaling down? I will address this in the video later on, but spoiler alert, the reality is it doesn't make that much of a difference unless you're really missing the mark in terms of not understanding the content. Okay, let's do a little thought experiment here just to illustrate the difference between studying standard maths and events. Let's say you've got two students, you've got Alice and you've got Bob, okay? Now, Alice and Bob, for what it's worth, are identical in terms of their academic ability and also their work ethic. Now, Alice happens to study advanced maths and Bob is studying standard maths. Now, let's say both of them have the goal to get 90 in the HSC for both their respective courses. The question is, how much time would they need to devote to their study to get that 90? From a time commitment perspective, Bob would need to study around 40 minutes a night to achieve his 90 in standard maths for his HSC. Whereas Alice is probably more looking at 1.5 or double that time. So around 60 or potentially 90 minutes a night. Now, just to put that into consideration, that is a big difference over the two years, okay? Because effectively, Bob is gonna be studying half as much time as Alice will be in order to achieve that 90 he wants for his maths result. In my opinion, this is the most important decision you need to make and consider when it comes to choosing either standard or advanced maths. Because the reality is you've only got 24 hours in a day no more, no less. So on the flip side, the reason many students choose advanced maths is because they need it for some university degree that they think they wanna pursue in the future. And that's totally fair enough. So my bit of advice here would be to really look into which courses and which unis you wanna to go to and find out whether or not it's a prerequisite or it's just assumed knowledge because there's a big difference between the two. Because prerequisite is saying that you cannot enter that course without having done the prerequisite. So most likely being advanced maths. Whereas assume knowledge is kind of like saying, listen, we're not gonna count you out, but we're gonna assume that you've done all the course content for let's say advanced maths. And the reality is they're probably gonna test you on those concepts really early on. So if you don't pass, you can't really move forward in the degree anyway. Now on top of this assume knowledge or prerequisite aspect that you need to take into consideration, what you also need to think about is, can you get the ATAR to actually get you in the course in the first place? Okay, because that is gonna be obviously a factor that's either gonna prevent you just in general from getting in or it's actually gonna get you in the gate. So this brings me to my second point, which is commitment. Now, when I talk about commitment, what I'm really trying to say is, are you willing to do the things that you don't wanna do and when you least wanna do them? Are you willing to actually put the work in and study potentially 1.5 or double the amount of time that you would have had to study in standard maths? Now, to be honest, in my opinion, if you don't answer a hard yes to this question, well, the reality is you probably should just go straight to standard maths. Another important aspect you need to think about is how is your algebra skills? Because the fundamental difference between standard and advanced maths is how much algebra that you're gonna be using and how complex that algebra is gonna be. Because in standard maths, there is basically just a few equations that you need to kind of manipulate. Whereas advanced maths, you start to get into whole calculus and derivatives and integration and all that. Well, if you know from the get-go that algebra just ain't your thing, well, maybe that's something important to take into consideration. However, on the other hand, if you're committed to spend your holiday time refining and practicing and spending more dedicated practice into improving your algebra, 
well then advanced mats might be a good option for you. Okay, now let's move to this scaling aspect because I'm sure you won't hear about it. Because the most common question I get asked about this is, doesn't standard mats scale you way down compared to advanced mats? Now it's such a misunderstood concept and there's so much bad information out there on the internet and social media that to be honest, doing the whole scaling thing would take a whole video in and of itself. But for simplicity's sake, let me just give you a really brief overview of what the scaling looks like in terms of standard and advanced. Now bear in mind these numbers I'm gonna give you are probably gonna change year on year because scaling is done afresh year on year. So last year in 2023, an 85 in standard mats was equivalent to an 80 in advanced mats. And 100 in standard mats was equivalent to a 97 in advanced mats. So you see, the difference really isn't that much. However, once your marks go below 80 in standard mats, they really start to drop off and that's where we begin to see the scaling down effect. But the truth is, if you're in this camp, you're probably not watching this video considering advanced maths anyway, so you don't really need to worry about that. And like I said at the start of this video, if your goal is to get the best bang for buck when it comes to studying and getting the highest possible ATAR you can get, then standard maths is a really, really good option. But if you think advanced maths is gonna be crucial to what you wanna study at uni, well, I think if you can get at least a band four in that course, it's probably a good decision. And I just wanna double down on this point. Scaling changes year on year because it is a function of just an algorithm that UAC applies. No one's sitting there deciding that advanced maths should scale higher or that standard maths should scale lower because of its course difficulty. It has nothing to do with that. And for those of you that have got this far into the video and are still sitting on the fence, I would say, why not just give year 11 maths advanced a go? And as a rule of thumb, if you're not passing your assessments and your exams at school, well then maybe it is not the right course for you. Now remember, you don't need to do this all alone. Talk to your teachers, get some advice from your parents, speak to different people, and especially try and get in contact with some of the students that graduated the year before you, or you know took a different path like your siblings, whether they did advanced or standard, whether they had any regrets in doing so. And finally, one more thing that I really wanna mention is that don't choose a subject based on how much you like it. I know I'm going against the grain here, but the reality is you will like the subjects that you're good at and you'll be good at the subjects that you are willing to be committed to, which means you're going to be good at the subjects that you actually apply yourself. And those subjects that you'll be good at, you'll end up liking. So this is a kind of circular process. And I think a lot of the times you get given advice, which is backwards when it comes to choosing a subject that you like first and then hoping that that's going to lead to you becoming better. So don't use enjoyment as your main deciding factor. Really ask yourself, am I willing to commit to whatever it takes to achieve the best possible marks in this course for me? All right, that's it for this video. If there's any comments or questions, let me know down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.